What's up guys, Ashton here from Without Code. Let's take a look at our new video slider widget. This is a great new way to display your videos in a slider format that we can navigate through with our arrows here. And of course, click to play, shown in a handy little light box display here. It's a super powerful widget with all the features that you would find in a standard image slider. It's also very easy to implement, supporting video links from YouTube, Vimeo, and Vizar. So let's jump right over to Without Code. I've got our musician theme pulled up here, and let me scroll down to a little section here with a standard video play box implemented. And what we're gonna do here is replace this video player with our new video slider, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this very easily. So what we can actually do is remove this player completely, leaving us with just some empty space in our row here beneath our headline. And now we can jump into the widgets library, scroll down to media, grab that video slider widget, and we'll drop it into our row beneath our headline. Cool. Now we're not getting anything showing up yet, and that's because we need to load in some videos. So starting in our settings panel here with our unique ID, just give this something unique on your page if you have multiple instances of this widget. We can go ahead and leave this alone for now. And next up is where we load in our videos, and we do this by list items. So we've got one list item here already, so let's click into it. And we're presented with two simple options here, a video URL, as well as a custom poster for the slider, in case you wanna use something other than the default thumbnail for the video. So let's start with the URL. And again, remembering this must come from YouTube, Vimeo, or Vazar. I'm gonna switch over to the Without Code YouTube channel. And we'll click over to Videos. And let's just grab this first one here, our tutorial on our InfiniScroll widget. So all I need to do is grab the link. So we'll click into it and we just need to grab the URL for the video, and we can do this from the URL bar up here, or simply click into our share prompt here beneath the video. And in this pop-up beneath our embed and sharing options, we get the full URL displayed here as well. So I'll simply click to copy. Perfect. I head back to the widget, and we'll paste that link inside. And when we do that, we can already see it populating on our page nicely. And of course, like I mentioned, you can use your custom poster here to upload a different thumbnail image if you choose, or if you leave this blank, it'll simply populate the slider with whatever the default thumbnail is from YouTube, Vimeo, or Vizar. It is recommended that you use a custom poster though, especially if you're using a large slider or even a full bleed slider. Depending on the platform where the video is coming from, the default thumbnail might not be as high res as you want, so using a custom poster would enable you to get a sharper image to show. So since we're working with a slider, we'll need a couple more links. So let's head back to YouTube, and I'll click back to go back to our channel. And we'll grab a second link here for our All Things Google tutorial. And I'll just grab this one from the URL bar, copy it, and back to the widget. Now we'll click Add Video in our Settings panel here to get a new list item. And then we'll paste our new link in here as well. And we'll grab one more. Let's head back to YouTube once again. And back on the channel here, let's use this animated bars tutorial as our third one. Copy that URL. Back to the widget. We'll add one more list item. And we'll paste the link inside. Perfect. Next up in our settings here is our slider height. You can adjust this in pixels here. And to adjust the width, we'll actually want to do that on the page itself. So let's say we wanted this whole slider to be smaller all around. We could lower the height here to, say, 350. There we go. And then I'll close the settings panel really quick, and here on our canvas, I can actually use my mouse to size the slider down manually. We also have the option for a full width slider or full bleed, and all we'll need to do for that is to click into our row design, and we would toggle on full bleed row to do this. Now, since I've shrunk the width of the slider, don't worry if the preview image ends up looking a little wonky here in the editor. All I have to do is publish or click up here to preview, and everything will fix itself just like that. And as I scroll through the videos, we can already see our three videos here showing up and sliding about very nicely. So let's go back to the editor and back into the settings panel. We have an option down here for videos to display at once, and this does just as it says. You can display several videos at a time in the slider, or you can also do a carousel style display, which I'll show you in a second. So let's bump this option up to two and see what happens. 
cool. So now we have two showing up at once and they're showing a bit smaller and we could adjust the sizing of the whole slider, of course. Now this could be a nice option if you're using a full bleed row to perhaps utilize the space with multiple videos at once. So back in that panel, playback mode allows you to set the actual video itself to play either within the slider or in the light box as we saw in the live demo. Next up is enable centered slide. This is how you would accomplish that carousel look I mentioned a second ago, where it has traditionally a centered video or image and half of the video or image showing on either side of the centered one. So this is only to be used when you have an even number of videos shown at once, as we did up here by putting two. So since we have an even number, if we now toggle on our centered slide, we can now see that we have that carousel look, if that's what you're going for. And since we've done that, let's drop our slider height down to like 200 to reduce the amount of empty black space. There we go. Further down in the panel, just a couple more things to see here. Margin between slides allows you to add some padding, so we can enter something like 10 pixels here, giving us a bit of space in between each one. Slide transition duration in milliseconds. Just increase this if you want to slow down the actual sliding movement. And finally, we have two additional sections here. We can click into autoplay slides, and we get a flyout panel here with the option to toggle on the autoplay with the ability to customize the time between slides and the ability to have it pause if the user is hovering their mouse on it. And navigation settings, click this and we get another flyout panel with two toggle options, one for the previous and next arrows and one for pagination dots. So lots of freedom here to get this slider behaving and looking exactly how you want it. Finally, before we close out, I want to click into our design section. We've got a handful of additional options going on here, mostly pretty self-explanatory. You can customize the colors of the background during playback as well as the navigation arrows. You can have the arrows placed inside or outside the slider with their padding and opacity adjustable here as well. And finally down here, we've got color, size, and padding settings for the pagination dots if you have those enabled as well. So let's close out of our panel and give this one quick preview. All right, everything's sliding smoothly and beautifully, allowing us to click into any video for a nice full-size lightbox display in a flash. Hope you enjoy our new video slider widget, guys. Any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to us in support, and we'd be glad to help. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.